John Malcolm is the director of the Mies Center for Legal and Judicial Studies at the Heritage Foundation. John also served as an advisor to President Trump during his search for a Supreme Court nominee. John, thanks for joining us. It's good to be with you, Elaine. Uh, let me start by asking you, what kind of guidance did you provide in um, discussing this uh, with the president during his decision process? Well, it, it's all been very indirect. I don't wish to mislead anybody. So after a meeting last March, shortly after Justice Scalia died, uh, Donald Trump turned to the head of the Heritage Foundation, Senator Jim DeMint, and asked him whether Heritage would help him to prepare a list of potential Supreme Court nominees. I was tasked with preparing that list, and actually we decided to publish that list. So that list was as available, frankly, to Bernie Sanders as it was to Donald Trump. I do know a lot of people who are very close to Donald Trump and are advising him on this pick. Some of my friends and former colleagues are in the White House Counsel's Office, uh, and so I have certainly shared my views with them, and the president certainly has surrounded himself with a bunch of very, very bright and well-connected lawyers, and I'm sure his pick will be outstanding. Uh, based on your work and conversations that you may have had with colleagues, um, can you tell us what specific qualities Mr. Trump was looking for in a Supreme Court nominee? Well, the critical one that I think any conservative wants is to have a constitutionalist judge, somebody who is going to approach constitutional issues by looking at the text and structure of the Constitution and interpreting its words and phrases according to the original public meaning that existed at the time those provisions were ratified. It's also somebody who is going to look at the text of statutes and try to follow the wording of that statute and to deconflict them with other statutes and not try to pour their personal predilections or political preferences into the those laws. It's somebody who understands that the role of a judge is an important but a limited role. And he's also probably going to be look, looking for somebody who has a settled uh, approach to judging and is unlikely to be, you know, bend to the will of, uh, say, the, you know, the, the cocktail circuit in New York City or Georgetown or perhaps the editorial board of the New York Times. Um, let me uh, turn to this topic. Currently, there are only two people of color and three women on the Supreme Court bench. Did diversity ever play a role in President Trump's decision? I don't know. Uh, he certainly had a very, very diverse list uh, on his list of 21 people. There were quite a few women. There was an African American, a Hispanic. I, you know, I don't believe in sort of justice by the numbers or justice by the race. Uh, they were a broad array of men and women with diverse backgrounds. They were all outstandingly qualified. Uh, and certainly the two people who are left, Neil Gorsuch and Tom Hardiman, if you believe the rumors, uh, are two outstanding individuals. Well, John, the president's pick is coming a couple of days earlier than previously thought. Uh, any sense of what the strategy might have been behind moving up the announcement? I really have no no idea what prompted that, other than that the president knows his pick. He knows that there's a lot a lot of people anxious about this, and so for whatever reason, uh, he decided to move it up. And the political environment, um, how much of a role do you think the current news cycle perhaps might have played in moving up the date? It's hard to say. These are early days in the administration. Obviously, he's fast out of the blocks, and there's an awful lot uh, going on. You know, we still have cabinet uh, positions to fill. There are new executive orders flying uh, out of the handle, and you know, and 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 so this this fits right in with it. But this is now going to be around. You know, the hearing will probably take place in in uh, six weeks or two months. Uh, so whoever this nominee is, there'll be plenty of time for vetting them and to have public discussion about them. All right, John Malcolm in Washington. John, thanks very much for your time. Good to be with you.